cars. Now, moving on, uh, uh, I am delighted to welcome into the studio this morning uh, Adam Bushakovic. Uh, Adam, good morning to you. Good morning, Mike. It's a pleasure to have you here. I'm very excited. Um, as some people may be aware, um, when I came up from my holiday and I had to start putting shows together, um, I said a little appeal for interesting guests. Who's got stuff going on in the area? I said, put it out on social media. And I must admit, I had a lot of people uh, contact me, which was brilliant. And I've got some amazing guests lined up uh, over the coming weeks. Um, but the first one that stood out to me, I said, oh, this guy looks interesting. Uh, Adam, you are um, here because you are running something that is called the Folk Gravel Festival in Ulster in a couple of weeks' yes. time. Uh, Folk Gravel, what's that all about? Yes, well, um, Folk Gravel is probably one of Ulster's most famous citizens. He was a, a very fascinating man. He was born in 1554, died in 1628. He was actually murdered, <laughs> poor chap. Oh, dear. Um, but really, um, he was... Uh, so should we say allegedly murdered? Or was no, it... he was murdered. Oh, right, he OK, was, fine. <laughs> he had a, um, at the age of 74 as well, which was a very tragic story. But Gosh. he was a courtier, he was a politician, he was a jouster, he was also Chancellor to the Exchequer, so he was like the, um, the Jacobean version of Philip Hammond. Yeah, oh far dear. More, far, far more interesting man, I have to say, mm. Phil Greville was. Uh, but nobody's heard of him. But also he was a poet. Um, he was a very artistic man, a great patron to musicians, um, to writers, to architects, that sort of thing. So we're putting on this festival really to celebrate his life mm -hmm. and to hopefully encourage everyone in Ulster, but not, you know, not just Ulster, but yeah. around Warwickshire to... to remember this very intriguing figure. Well, I've spoken to you before the show. Clearly, this is something that you, well, you're doing a festival. You know a lot about uh, uh, Falk uh, Gravel. Um, and as you say, a lot of people really have, will have had no idea who he is. <laughs> um, so is, is it just your thing, this festival? You say we're putting on a festival. Is, well, that, is that the royal we? Or, I mean, what, what sort of <laughs> other interest is there? Is it just a one lone man yourself? No, it's, it's not just a one Surely man Surely it can't thing. be to do an um, entire festival. No, although, although um, no, of course, it's not just me, but uh, fortunately I have several other co organisers. I should say that um, we've received some really generous support from several institutions, including the Ulster Local History and District um, History Society. Right. Uh, but also various institutions in Ulster, in Warwick as well. Excellent. Um, who have very kindly given us some money to, to make this all happen. Um, but really, it's, it's our, the first time we've ever done it. And it's, it, really, the festival consists of several things. Um, there's lots of walking tours. We also have lots of talks that are going on in Ulster Town Hall. And also, um, we're putting on a concert on the evening of the 29th, which is which also, um, I, I'm glad to say, is also going to include the pr world premiere of a new play, in fact. So there's loads wow. of things going on. And let's just be clear then, because people are who, whose interest is, is piqued by this, this is a couple of weeks' time, isn't it? Is, is yes. it a Friday, Saturday, Sunday, the 20... 28th to the yeah. 30th of September. Right, so, so the end of September. Uh, and uh, uh, all sorts of stuff going on. What sort of concert are you doing? Well, um, Fulk Greville uh, was a... a as I've already mentioned, a poet, but also a great patron to musicians. And it's really interesting that the most famous lutenist and composer for the lute, a chap called John Dowland, actually set several of Fulk Greville's poems to music. And, and the equivalent I love to give today is that, could you imagine if, if Ed Sheeran um, set to music some poems that Philip Hammond had written? That's the sort of equivalent <laughs> today. Um, you couldn't imagine it, could you? But that happened no. um, 400 years ago. That's a that's an amazing thing. Um, what? How long is it? What's the sort of time scale in terms of you setting this up? Is this is this something that you've been uh, burning to do? You know, for quite some time, or working towards, or, or was it something which has sort of happened relatively recently in the last few months? Or well, you know, it, it's a funny story, really, because about la well over a year ago, last January, in fact, um, I gave a lecture in Ulster to the History Society there, and lots of people turned up, and I, it was all about Fort Greville trying to encourage these people in Ulster to recognise that a really fascinating figure from history was born there and, and did lots of amazing things. And then some people afterwards came up to me and asked, well, you know, it would be a really great idea, wouldn't it, to do a festival? And I thought, you know what, you have an idea there. So mm. I, I went away, um, got together lots of contacts and said, you know, would you like to, you know, help, give us a helping hand, come and give a talk or come and give a, um, you know, come and sing or, or something like that. Everyone said yes. And then this is really the result of all of that. So it's taken an awful long time to organise, but yeah. really um, I, I, I hope lots of people are going to come up and really uh, and rediscover this fascinating figure from Warwickshire's past. Yeah. It also begs the question, um, you clearly have a lot of specialist knowledge about this. 
um, I can imagine the amount of work that you've done, if nothing else, over the last year in preparation for the festival. But I suspect that this is something which has been, well, you were lecturing about this anyway prior mm. to that. Why do you have such a personal knowledge of this? What, where's the interest level for you? What's the, uh, is there a connection? Yes. Or, or? Well, many years ago, just after I'd finished my history degree at university, I actually came out looking for a job. And um, I, I very fortunately sort of stumbled into one working at Warwick Castle. Mm -hmm. And Fulk Greville actually owned Warwick Castle. He saved it from dereliction. Right. Um, it, was, it was absolutely falling apart. The towers were falling down. And he spent a huge amount of money transforming it into a home. He saved it. I can't imagine Philip Hammond doing such a thing. No, but... Philip Hammond, um, <laughs> you know, the, the, the politicians today are so unexciting and so uninteresting. Uh, but Fulk Greville really, um, I was introduced to him when I was working there. And I thought... Um, you know, what an interesting figure. And I then found out he was a poet. He wrote over 100 sonnets. He was, you know, uh -huh. he was writing poetry at the same time that that chap just, you know... Is his name William S? What was his name? <laughs> I uh, was writing. Oh, he's got um, some local... Someone local. Yeah, someone local, local well at the same time, yeah. Um, but uh, his poetry as well is, is really intense. It's, it's, it's also quite morbid, and um, I quite like that. Is it's, there any, uh, any evidence or any suggestion that they... You know, that they knew each other, uh, uh, well, Fort Greville and Shakespeare. Or well, you know, a few years paths. ago, this, this very eccentric man actually wrote a book. Um, I, 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 don't, I don't agree with it at all, really, that actually Fort Greville might have been Shakespeare. But I, I think oh. it's, 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 it's one of those mad conspiracy theories yeah. which should have never seen the light of day, really. But, but definitely um, Fort Greville's father, who was also called Fulk, actually, Mm -hmm. um, uh, was very involved in the administration and various bodies in Stratford-upon-Avon and at the same time as Shakespeare's father. They yeah. would have known each other. But Shakespeare's and, um, father was mayor or something, wasn't he? It was, it was yes, quite, he uh, was a quite high up. Yeah. In the, um, so, and, and also, there, many years ago, an academic wrote this very interesting thing because we've, we know so little about Shakespeare's life and that if he didn't go to school in uh, at Kes down the road, then um, lots of people have suggested, well, he could have studied... At Beecham Court, just outside of Ulster, which is where the Grevels had their ancestral home, and they employed actors, and they were very well connected. So, there are lots of really intriguing links. But um, mm. Fulk Greville, as a man himself, um, you know, he was incredibly talented and very interested in all the sorts of things, um, uh, all the key pursuits of his day. Yeah. Really. Mm -hmm. um, well, you have brought with you. Uh, yeah. something rather interesting. Uh, which should, I, I, should I get it out? Yeah, let's go for it. Uh, uh, I was uh, uh, invited Adam to come onto the show today and he was delighted uh, to come along. And we set that all up and arranged the time and so on. And he appeared with a, uh, a music case and I thought, well, it's not a guitar. Uh, nor a bass drum. Uh, what have you? What have you bought for us? Yeah, lots of people ask me um, if it's a broken guitar, but this is um, this is actually a lute. Fantastic. Um, spelt L U T E, and mm -hmm. it was the primary instrument of the 16th and 17th centuries. And, and basically, like it's it's an early form of a guitar. Um, this one has 18 strings. I on just it. I was going to attempt to count those as I looked at <laughs> yes. it, but there's a lot. Um, now you're going to play for us. Um, I said to Adam, "Do you sing?" He said, "No, no." So it's not one of those things, but it's it's a beautiful bit of loop music, and uh, yeah, give us give us a, a burst. Yeah, so this um, this is a very short preludium written by a chap called John Dowland, who um, Fulk Greville knew and was a patron of. So um, whenever I hear this music, really, I, you know, one of the things I love to imagine is that this is the music that you know, not only Fulk Greville listened to, but Elizabeth I, James I, you know, all of these very interesting figures from history. <laughs> Never, that could be a Thank first you. 
Yeah. First for Welcome Radio. For, live, forgive though. me for those those bum notes, but well, uh, it's well, a beautiful you're, sound. You're forgiven. It is a, a truly beautiful sound. Uh, and uh, masterfully played, if I may Thank say you. so. Um, that's an absolute delight. Thanks for sharing that with us. Um, so the festival is coming up in a couple of week, uh, a weeks' time. What you, you sort of glossed over some of the events. So there's walking tours and a lecture and that kind of thing. Yeah, so our, our first event um, is on the 28th of September, which is actually a lecture for myself, giving a complete overview. So if you know nothing about yeah. Fort Gravel, you want to know a bit of everything, then come to that. But... On the Saturday morning, we're doing a walking tour of Warwick, looking at um, certain areas related to his life, including the castle. You've got access to the castle as part of that. Yes, ah. um, very kindly, the management there have given us free mm. entry, which is great. Brilliant. And then later that afternoon, we have the authority on Fort Greville's um, poems and plays from York University coming to give a talk about why he's such an interesting writer. Oh, fabulous. Uh, and then on the Saturday night, we have the concert, which is very exciting. Mm -hmm. um, and then on the Sunday morning, we have another walking tour in Ulster. Uh, and then some talks later in the afternoon, looking at um, Warwickshire's uh, Elizabethan and Jacobean gardens. Um, Fort Greville had some very famous gardens that he planted in his lifetime. Um, so that, that will be fascinating. And then finishing the afternoon, um, we have a lecture on uh, the other Fulk Grevels, other members of his family who later have in had interesting lives. And right. um, one of his ancestors actually in the 1930s tried to become a Hollywood film star. Well, I was going to say, so um, he, he didn't come out of nowhere. Presumably he, he, he had or, and then carried on his, his line with... Yes, well, politicians and influential and talented yes. artistic people as well. Well, there are still Greville's living today. Um, his ancestors eventually did become the Earls of Warwick, and they owned Warwick Castle right up until 1978, in fact. Gosh. Uh, and, and one of the very um, things we're fortunate to have is um, that the current ancestor of Fulk Greville, uh, uh, Lord Brooke is his title, is actually our festival patron, um, which, which we're very pleased to have. This is probably the first time in a long time that a member of the Greville family has been involved with, with something Warwickshire related, so we're really thrilled yeah. to, um, to have him as our patron. Well, I think it's, uh, it's an incredible thing that you're doing. It's, uh, this is, as you say, this is a, 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 a hugely interesting, uh, fascinating a uh, little chapter of British history here about which nobody knows, really. Indeed. Uh, and you are doing an amazing job of bringing it in an extremely engaging and entertaining way to the, uh, to the interest of us all. So that's brilliant. Um, is there a, what, a website that you have for all these events going on? Yes, uh, you have to be very careful when you type in Fulk Greville because obviously uh, his first name is a bit difficult. <laughs> yes. But it's, um, it's fulkfest.org.uk. So that's F U L K E F E S T. Uh, .org .uk. Fest .org .uk. Yes. Okay, yes, no, we can all be quite careful <laughs> you with that. You have to that. be careful how you type that in. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> that's okay. Um, but I can imagine there'll be a few people heading off to check it out right now. It sounds absolutely fascinating. Um, but it's, uh, so there's, there's talks, and it, you say he, he wrote poetry. Yes. Um, is, is there, as part of, is there any, any, like, poetry recital as part of what's going yeah, on so, there? Um, at our concert, in fact, we're going to have um, several of his sonnets uh, are going to be recited. Also, um, a few, um, of maybe a, a part of one of the wonderful speeches he wrote um, to welcome James I to Warwick. But also, uh, our concert is actually going to feature a, the world premiere of, of a new play, which has just been written by a very interesting playwright who lives in Leeds called Stuart Forty. Mm -hmm. And it's all about his life, and, and it's, it's done in such a comedic and very funny way. It's, it's a sort of a tragedy comedy, really. Wow. Um, so, and that's just part yeah. of the, the concert in the evening? Yes. So that's a, that's so, a big event, then. It is. You're selling uh, tickets, presumably. You're not just inviting yes, people for free. Yes, of but course. But that sounds like yes. an amazing evening, really. It will be. Uh, and there's also, of course, a glass of wine included on the rival and canapes, too. So of that's, course, that's he worth. says. Of course there's the glass yes. of wine and canapes. Sophisticated. This is, this is a sophisticated <laughs> Warwickshire. We don't muck about with buy a can of Coke at the bar. No, no, no. Brilliant. Um, so, uh, listen, Adam, we're going to play another tune now, uh, not a lute tune, an 80s classic, um, and then come back and talk to you some more. So please don't go away. Um, but for the rest of us, what have we got coming up next? Uh, oh, an absolute beauty from uh, the late 80s. Uh, it was a British number one. Um, one of my absolute favourite bands of the time, the Pet Shop Boys. This is Heart. Heart. 